I will explain myself another time. For the present, pray attend to the glossed verses and the gloss, which run thus. Could was become an is for me, then would I ask no more than this. Or could for me the time that is become the time that is to be. Gloss Dame Fortune once upon a day to me was bountiful and kind. But all things change. She changed her mind, and what she gave, she took away. O oh, Fortune, long I've sued to thee, the gifts thou gavest me restore, for, trust me, I would ask no more, who was, become, and is for me. No other prize I seek to gain, no triumph, glory, or success. Only the long-lost happiness, the memory whereof is pain. One taste, he thinks, of bygone bliss the heart-consuming fire might stay. And so it come without delay, then would I ask no more than this. I ask what cannot be, alas, that time should ever be and then come back to us and be again. No power on earth can bring to pass. For fleet of foot is he, I wis, and idly, therefore, do we pray that for A hath left us may become for us the time that is. Perplexed and certain to remain, twixt hope and fear, is death, not life. For better, sure, to end the strife and dying seek release from pain. And yet, Thought were the best for me. Anon, the thought aside I fling, And to the present fondly cling, And dread the time that is to be. When Don Lorenzo had finished reciting his gloss, Don Quixote stood up and in a loud voice, Almost a shout, exclaimed as he grasped Don Lorenzo's right hand in his, By the highest heavens, noble youth, but you are the best poet on earth, and deserve to be crowned with laurel, not by Cyprus or by Gaeta, as a certain poet, God forgive him, said, but by the academies of Athens, if they still flourished, and by those that flourish now, Paris, Bologna, Salamanca. Heaven grant that the judges who rob you of the first prize, that Phoebus may pierce them with his arrows, and the muses never cross the thresholds of their doors. Repeat me some of your long measure verses, Signor, if you will be so good, for I want thoroughly to feel the pulse of your rare genius. Is there any need to say that Don Lorenzo enjoyed hearing himself praised by Don Quixote, albeit he looked upon him as a madman? Power of flattery, how far-reaching art thou, and how wide are the bounds of thy pleasant jurisdiction. Don Lorenzo gave a proof of it, for he complied with Don Quixote's request and entreaty, and repeated to him this sonnet on the fable or story of Pyramus at Thisbe. Sonnet The lovely maid, she pierces now the wall, heart pierced by her young Pyramus doth lie. And love spreads wing from Cyprus Isle to fly, A chink to view so wondrous great and small. Their silence speaketh, for no voice at all Can pass so straight a straight, but love will ply, Where to all other power twere vain to try. For love will find a way whate'er befall. Impatient of delay, with reckless pace the rash maid wins the fatal spot where she sinks not in lover's arms, but death's embrace. So runs the strange tale how the lovers twain, one sword, one sepulcher, one memory, slays and entombs and brings to life again. Blessed be God! said Don Quixote when he had heard Don Lorenzo's sonnet, that among the hosts there are of irritable poets, I have found one consummate one, which, Signor, the art of this sonnet proves to me that you are. For four days was Don Quixote most sumptuously entertained in Don Diego's house, at 
the end of which time he asked his permission to depart, telling him he thanked him for the kindness and hospitality he had received in his house, but that, as it did not become knights errant to give themselves up for long to idleness and luxury, he was anxious to fulfill the duties of his calling in seeking adventures, of which he was informed there was an abundance in that neighborhood.